Year 4 teacher Deborah Lord has taken her class up onto a hill behind her primary school to do some geography field work. There you can see exposed limestone rock from this hill. And this track goes all the way from the top of the hill down to the bottom round to the side. The hill had once been settled by both Romans and Celts, so provided the perfect location to talk about the topic invaders, settlers and settlements. Deborah had given the children worksheets to help them think about the geographical features on the journey and a sketch map to complete. Do you think you've learned something today? Yes! Yeah! Good, because we're going to find out what you've learned this afternoon. So how best can Deborah use the afternoon to follow up the fieldwork back in the classroom? OK, now this afternoon we're looking at two learning outcomes again. The first one is I can The children will use maps, photographs and the field sketches to understand how settlements are connected and maps, symbols and grid references to show the locations of various structures. Watching Deborah are two experts. Don Kimber used to teach geography to trainee teachers and is now a primary schools inspector. Alison Bailey is subject leader for geography in the Faculty of Education at the University of the West of England. The classroom work is a very good opportunity to engage the children in using secondary sources to build on and extend the knowledge that they have picked up in the morning and to develop their understanding of the, the geographical concepts. The things I would hope to see include one, use of maps, basic skill, two, uh, like to be use of photographs or pictures. In addition, um, depending upon what the teacher's objectives are, it could well be opportunities for speaking and listening with every child probably having something they can say and discuss and say what they enjoyed and so on. Deborah has laid out four activities, one on each table. Tables one and two have different scaled maps. Table three has a set of photographs and the children on table four will concentrate on their field sketches. Right, OK, I'm going to put you into four groups. OK, so you need to listen out to find out which group you're going to be in. I chose to do a round robin of activities because of the limited resources that were available to me. I had a finite number of 1 in 25,000 maps. I had one 1 in 5,000 map and I had a set of photographs. The fourth activity, the children were encouraged to complete areas of the field sketch that they felt they could put more information in and to annotate them more clearly. But before Deborah can get the children down to work, she has the task of organising them in the classroom. So get your stuff, OK, and sit around a table in your group. So the larger groups need to sit at the bigger tables and the smaller groups here. So the one group of seven could be here and the one group of six could start over there. So Charlie, your group there. George, your group here. Um, Jack, your group over there. And Harvey's group could go over there. At last, with the class settled, Deborah can explain what to do to the first table. A lot of this is about doing and looking and identifying. Are you listening? It's not about writing an awful lot of information today. So the first thing you have to do on the map says is identify our school. Then you have to identify Wilbury Hill. This was looking at the 1 in 25,000 map, which was identifying the school on Wellbury Hill, identifying where they took the field sketches, looking for the grid reference, comparing their field sketch with the map. Did their sketch have as much, less or more? Did they add many more details? And then asking them particular questions like, could they identify certain things on the map, such as the blue lines, the lines for the ditches and rivers? Yeah. It says, um, um, compare your field sketch with the map. OK, so what do you notice about the differences between your field sketch and the map? What can you see on here that you can't see on here? Lines and lanes. OK. I can see lines and lanes. OK, what else can't... What have you got on your map that you can't see on there? Um, the fields. Fields, that's right. What are these blue lines? Red. Pardon? Not the sea. It's to do with. Do you remember at the top when we talked about the drainage ditches? 
Well, that is evidence that the drainage ditches are there. They are here. No, and why not? Because we can see them. We can see them very well, could we? One of the things the teacher asks them to do is to compare the detail that they can see on their field sketches with what's on the maps. Uh, and I think that's rather good, that the mm. children are being asked to evaluate the resources they're using. What they do notice is that the reams, the drainage channels that have drained the Somerset levels, can't be seen on their field sketch because they're hidden by the hedges. But yet when they're mm. looking on the map, because it's plan view, the clear blue yeah. lines come out nice and clearly. So I, I think that's, that's a very nice touch where she's actually got the children themselves trying to make judgments about what the benefits the good points and the bad points are of each of the different resources. Show me where Wick St Lawrence is. Okay, now can you... So what was quite nice was they got all this information on the field sketch and then when they actually look at the map, they discover, well, that there's all these roads connecting these areas and they don't see those. So it makes them realise that what you see with a naked eye, you can't always... You can't tell that those roads were there. They knew they were there. They could talk to you about the fact that, oh, yes, we've driven to Wick St Lawrence, but they can't actually identify it on the field trip. All right, well done. Can you change now? And I'm going to count to 50, and then I want you all sat down. One, two, 30, 31. Brianna, do you not need something? No, I said move one table to the right, Charlie. Do so you need to be over here? 40, 46, 47. The one in 5,000 map was about them identifying the school and Wilbury Hill and identifying specifically the route that we took from the school to the hill. Yeah, we saw the observatory. Let me find yeah, out we saw the observatory. So were you quite near yeah, the observatory? We, we looked away down. From These children are clearly highly motivated by looking at this map hmm. of where they've been. It's nice to see them collaborating to try to find the hill and the school. Yes, children enjoy maps and uh, we also see here they're doing a lot of speaking and listening with each other engaged on this, this practical task as they follow up their investigations you know from the morning input. The advantage of this one to five thousand map, the land plan map, is that because it's a large scale, the children can pick out their features much more easily. It's rather nice to hear that child saying, there's our old school. And, mm. Mm. Um, but not all teachers are aware that you can actually get a map centred on the area that you're studying by going to uh, one of the suppliers and choosing the tiles that you want, the area of coverage that you want. Um, and a map like that in land plan covering those four Where kilometres would, would cost about £25. Earlier, Deborah had briefed the two part-time learning assistants she has in the classroom by telling them the afternoon's learning outcomes and by explaining the task on their particular table. I was fortunate enough to have adult support because I have LSAs that work in the class, which was great because it kept those children that maybe wouldn't have stayed on task on their own, it helped them to stay on task. It also helped those children that were maybe a little bit unsure about what was expected of them, really focusing what was expected of them. And the adult, of course, then can ask key questions that really kind of stimulate the discussion that's going to go on. Of course, there'll be some classrooms where there won't be anybody else to support or help. So it's certainly a case of organising things well so that uh, children are going to be able to get on with their work with only just intermittent support from the class teacher. Some weeks before the field trip, Deborah had done two detailed recce with her colleague, Joanna Copley. The recce's had proved really useful. She'd establish any health and safety risks and taken photos of all the different views. These are now the focus of the third activity back in the classroom. But what was nice about the photographs was the children had to say, well, did they see this photograph? Oh yeah, we saw it as we were walking along. Okay, did we see this photograph? Well, no, I don't really, we didn't really see that one because it was round the corner and it wasn't very clear. So that was kind of nice, getting them to identify what had we actually seen in comparison to the photographs. That, that was when um, Mrs Lord found these leaves that they used to... Um, I assume the teacher's taken these with a, a digital camera. So there's the opportunity, perhaps, if, they had, if you were in a classroom with an interactive whiteboard, to use a picture of a view 
for example. You know, it can be the children themselves using the digital camera. Or you can have a different data. layer over mm. the top. That's another advantage over the photograph on the interactive whiteboard. By having a different layer, they could actually do, use a drawing tool to actually draw a field sketch themselves. The main purpose of the field trip had been to fill in an outline sketch map, and these maps are now the focus of the final activity. The last table were involved with looking at their field sketches and comparing their field sketch with a partner and seeing what had their partner got in relation to what they had got. Did it tie up? Could they help each other review, evaluate, improve the field sketch that they had? And how could they do that? Now, these children are very focused here on comparing and discussing their field sketches, aren't they? Yet again, using or responding to visual resources um, because children in classrooms these days are very often encouraged to think about how best they learn. Yes. And there are those who are conscious that they respond well to something visual as opposed to the traditional when it was often a case of just listening to what the teacher had to say and not necessarily having a lot to be able to look at. I felt happy because every, I knew that everyone back at school was doing work and we were just outside playing and watching things. It made me feel a bit excited. For once I actually wanted to come to school. Now, all in all, it's actually been quite an exciting day today. Okay, and we've actually looked at four different learning outcomes today. What were we trying to find out while we were on the hill? In the afternoon, the children they... achieved the, uh, what the teacher had in mind for them. Debbie had set out the work with maps, uh, also set out as an objective the work or developing skills of use of field sketches. Those were advanced in the afternoon, building on the morning work. Um, very successful with the way it was organised, the children moved on, good pace was maintained during the lesson. You could see by the response that they were still enjoying it um, and other adults too involved in the teaching were again well informed and again supporting children's learning very well. The follow-up work was well organised. The children were on a rotation around a range of activities which allowed them to talk to each other, to look at secondary sources to support what they had learned in the morning. Um, I'm not quite sure whether they had enough time on each of the tasks, but presumably the teacher will ensure that there are further follow-up sessions and that the learning outcomes addressed in the morning on the field work can actually be followed up you know, as a continuing programme of work. Oh my goodness me, there goes the bell. Right, OK, listen guys, I've really enjoyed today. I hope you have. Go home and tell your parents about what an exciting day we've had. The whole day, the whole follow-up work was all about talk. It was all about talk. It was getting the children to talk to each other about what they saw and how they could compare it to the maps, which was why there was no writing activity, which was why I gave them all a sheet with a list of things that they had to look for and discuss. Not all teaching has to be about recording. You know, it makes it more difficult when it comes to assessment, obviously, um, because you've got, to, you've got to have an ear around. But certainly, um, from, the, from the evidence, from the field sketches that they've done, and from the sheets that they completed, the history sheet and the geography sheet as well, looking at settlements, um, they got a lot out of it, and the majority of them met the learning outcomes as well. Don't forget 